you know, I spent a lot of time talking about business and money, but deep down, you know, I focus, Johnny, on seven things in my life. I focus on my spiritual life. I focus on my family life. I focus on my mental, like how am I developing mentally and with confidence and satisfaction and gratitude. I focus on my physical life. What kind of shape is my body in? I focus on my professional life and not till number six and they're in order of importance to me. Not until number six am I talking about financial life. And then number seven is my social, my friends and my social network. Alan has started and grown several multi-million dollar businesses. His mission is to help you do the same. Welcome to the Business Growth Pod, building the future one entrepreneur at a time. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Alan. I'm a family man, an attorney, and an entrepreneur. Each week, we provide resources and advice to help build your business. Are you ready? Then let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to the Business Growth Pod. I'm your host, Alan Draper. I'm excited for this episode. We're going to do a little Q&A today. And I've got my man, Johnny Bubbles, with me today. This guy knows his stuff. He actually helps me with all my social media. So all that great content that you're seeing on my Instagram, on my TikTok, he's helping me produce that. So very talented individual. And he's going to be throwing questions at me. And we're going to see if we can add some value to your businesses and where you're headed. I actually don't know what the questions are going to be. So we're going to kind of do this one off the cuff. Make sure if you're not following me on Instagram and TikTok, make sure you track me down, Alan R. Draper, and make sure to follow me. So without further ado, Johnny, the floor is yours. Hey, Alan. Thank you for having me on, right? This is a definite change of scenery. Typically, I'm behind the scenes and I'm watching you as you have these interviews. I'm taking notes for content. And now I'm on the other end, going to be asking you some great questions. So we're going to start it from the beginning, right? How did you, you know, determine that you wanted to start a business? Man, that's a good question. So I think it was one of those things that was just in me, right? Like since I was a little kid, I've liked selling. I've liked trying to persuade people. And I like to build. I like to build things. And I learned that I'm not necessarily creative in terms of like artistically creative, like come up with a new painting or sculpt something out of clay. But I am very creative in developing ways to make money and creating businesses. And so I kind of paired those two personality traits together. On one hand, I could sell and I like to persuade people. And then on the other, I like to build. But, you know, early on, honestly, Johnny, a few things that really drew me to business was the freedom. I really like the freedom that business can offer. It's not always the case. And the money, right? I liked how there wasn't a ceiling on what I was being paid or what my potential was. And I like that fact with every aspect of my life. I don't like feeling like I have a limit to how far I can progress in any area of my life, right? With my relationships, spiritually, mentally, physically. I like that in those areas of my life, I can continue to push the limits and accomplish anything. There's no real limit or ceiling. And so I like that aspect. But here's the thing. One thing that I learned very quickly starting my first business. So going into it, I'm like, okay, I want freedom. And I very quickly learned that I had a lot less freedom right off the bat than I was having before. So I was practicing law and I'm like, man, I'm working a lot, but I was able to set that stuff down at the end of the day with a business and running a business. You're the last person, right? You're the last person standing. And so if the most difficult issues come to you and you can't pass those on to anybody else, which now I actually really enjoy those aspects. But early on, I was able to control my time a lot less because I didn't have systems and stuff in place. But yeah, that's kind of the answer to early on. I wanted to you know, be able to control my time a little more and control my destiny with things while building something that you know, I was passionate about. Awesome. Now, when you talk about freedom, right, that does take some time. And as you mentioned in the beginning, it probably took up more time than you were doing your regular job, right? Or your before you became an entrepreneur. What does that freedom look like to you? Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting question because 
freedom is different for different people. And there's this, I've kind of coined this hierarchy of financial freedom. And there was a psychologist, Abraham Maslow, that he came up with the hierarchy of needs. And basically it's this pyramid. And at the very top, it talks about, you know, or maybe I have it reversed. Maybe it's the very bottom, but in the very beginning stages are the most essential human basic needs, right? You need to breathe, you need to eat right? In order to survive. And each tier, the need was less important to physical survival and more important to other types of survival and development in the human being, like being loved or doing things that you enjoy, right? Those are kind of going up this hierarchy of needs. And I came up with this through, you know, reading different books and different sources, came up with this, you know, hierarchy of financial freedom And it's similar in some ways where step one or stage one of this hierarchy is people need financial resources in order to cover their basic needs. They have to make ends meet, right? So that's step one. Like, am I able to pay for my house, pay for food, put clothes on, like put clothes on my back, whatever. And so that's step one. Then step two that most people, but not all people pass through is this idea that they want influence or recognition, right? So those are the people that will buy a flashy car that will, you know, those are the folks that they care more about whether they look wealthy than whether they actually are. And there's nothing inherently wrong about that. You know, I believe people are able to do what they want with their money. It's just, that's what's important to them. So after influence, the third phase is freedom, right? Which we've been talking about. They want the freedom to be able to control their time. And that's a great aspect of being an entrepreneur. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't come right off the bat, but being able to control your time is so nice because some people will go to the beach. Some people will, you know, work part-time, spend more time with their kids. Some people will, you know, still work 40 or so hours a week. Some people will work even more. And the really cool part, Johnny, about being financially free, if you decide to continue to work is that, you can get really good at your job, really good at what you do because you no longer have to do it. So you're no longer doing it for money. You have a higher motivation. You love it. You enjoy the challenge, whatever the case is. And so I thought that was fantastic that I was able to get to a position where I'm able to work just for sheer love. Like I really enjoy what I'm doing. And then the fourth and kind of final stage of this hierarchy is legacy. So once people reach freedom, that next step is, they start thinking about what they leave behind. And I always say that people, we're not meant to live forever, right? We were never meant to just live in perpetuity. We all die at some point. That's one of the the guarantees in life. But, you know, the cool thing about our existence is that we can create something that does live forever, right? And that's our legacy. And as people progress from the first to the second to the third, and then finally the fourth stage, and you see this in a lot of entrepreneurs, right? Look at Bill Gates. Look at what he spends his time doing. He could do whatever he wants. He's been able to do whatever he wants for over 20 years, right? And he has the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and they spend so much time trying to give back. Whether you agree with you know some of his approaches or not, you can tell that that's the phase of life he's in. He's really doubling down on his legacy. And I think starting a business is really cool because it gives you the opportunity to control your time a little bit more and start having an impact. Now we have, everyone can have an impact. There's no question. And I realize that. And one of the greatest ways, Johnny, that we'll ever have an impact is on our family, but especially our children and raising them. That is no impact that I will ever have in my life will be greater or more immediate or more intense than the impact that I'll have on my children and the future generations that come from them. So, you know, I spend a lot of time talking about business and money, but deep down, you know, I focus, Johnny, on seven things in my life. I focus on my spiritual life. I focus on my family life. I focus on my mental, like how am I developing mentally and with confidence and satisfaction and gratitude. I focus on my physical life. What kind of shape is my body in? I focus on my professional life and not till number six. And they're in order of importance to me. 
not until number six am I talking about financial life. And then number seven is my social, my friends and my social network. So, you know, it's nice that we're able to kind of talk about money and business. But for me, that's number five and six on a list of seven of the most important items or categories in my life. Now, when you talk about these tiers, how do you know when you've made it to the next tier, right? Like going from influence to freedom to legacy. At what point do you say, you know, I think I've made it to freedom and time. I don't need to work. 40, 50 hours a week, I think it's time for me to start working on my legacy, whether that's your legacy with your business, with your family or your friends. You know, at what point does that light bulb go off and say, hey, I think I'm ready for that next tier? Yeah. So it's interesting that you asked this because I really struggled with going from, you know, I like to consider that I hopped over the second tier, the influence or status. I like to call it status tier a little bit to some extent, not completely to the freedom tier. And it took me a while to realize it. So going from one, from just having your needs met to two, that's strictly monetary. That's strictly, can I afford to buy a brand new sports car? Can I afford to you know, go on lavish vacations. So that's strictly a matter of, you know, financial wherewithal. Although some people do leverage debt to do those things, which I would highly recommend against if they, you know, they're not in a position to do that. So that's a strictly financial kind of decision or progression, I should say. But going from status to true freedom, financial freedom, a lot of that is mental, to be honest with you. Think of, you know, some professional athletes that, MC Hammer, right? He was so big when I was a kid and made millions upon millions of dollars. I don't even know how much, tens of millions of dollars and lost it all, right? And by lost it all, I mean, he spent it all. And there's professional athletes that we hear about that do this, that, you know, will go buy, you know, 60, 80 million dollar yacht. And so they spend a longer time in that status tier, but it's because that's where they want to spend it. You know, there's people that are really like famous that are great with money, like Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal. He's been investing in businesses since his rookie season, I think. His first paycheck, right? And he took some and spent it on status, right? I think he bought a car for his mom, bought a car for his dad, whatever, bought a nice car for himself. But then he earmarked a lot of it to get him to that freedom category, which he was a super high earner. So he got to that freedom category really quickly. So this is a cool question because not each status is strictly dependent on how much money you make. Sorry, not each tier is strictly dependent on how much money you make. And it's especially true going from freedom to legacy. I think it's natural for us to, once we get to freedom, saying what's next, but not everybody ends up at legacy or spending a lot of time with it. It's more of a personal choice than it is how much money they make. Right. And it's a great thing that you brought up Shaq because he mentions that when he first got his million dollar check, he spent it in one week, right? He bought his mom and his dad a car, bought a house, million dollars gone in one week. Hmm. And he realized that that was a dumb decision, right? He had his CPA yeah. telling him like, yo, what are you doing? You're going to go broke before you even get your money. Now, you mentioned you skipped over tier two. With society the way it is, in my opinion, with social media being so you know in everyone's face, everyone's always on their phone, on their computer, looking at the next hottest thing. Do you think that hurt or slowed down your growth to make a bigger impact for your story or your legacy? Yeah, I think there could definitely be an argument made that it did because, and I still have toys, right? I mean, I drive a brand new Porsche 911 Carrera, got a collection of some really nice cars, several houses in some nice areas, but I'm very frugal. I live very frugally, even though I have those toys. So it's different for me to buy a brand new sports car than it is for somebody that, you know, is delivering pizza, right? Not that there's anything wrong with that. I did that back in my day, but kind of going back to your question, I think so, right? Because if you put yourself in a position where you can make an immediate impact where people don't, and that's the world we live in, right, Johnny? It's a quick, like three second, eight second world that we live in to grab attention. So if you, you know, for example, you show up in an interview with a shirt that has a stain on it, a job interview, and you have a stain on your shirt, it doesn't matter if you work for Google, right? It's going to be really tough to get beyond that. So in the world that we live in today, that status 
piece, I think it is becoming more important because you want to grab attention immediately and you want to make that first impression very quick and very powerful because the first impression is going to last regardless. So that is 100% true. There's things that even I could do that would draw people to my social media or draw people to my brand more and quicker, but you do have to be financially smart about it. But if you do it, you could consider it an investment. I got to the point where I was investing in different companies and you know, I'm a business coach. Dude, I can't show up in a beat up old car. I can't show up to a meeting. And it's mostly because people are going to look at that and they're going to think, you know, why would I be taking business advice from this person if this is what they drive, right? And it makes sense because success attracts success. So you do want to represent yourself to a level that, you know, accurately depicts the success that you've had. And I see like trends around social media talking about how, you know, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg, they'll go around and like, and Steve Jobs, he wore a black, you know, turtleneck and jeans. That's all he wore. But I think that's different because I think those are outliers, right? Those people are, they're famous. But for the average person that doesn't have that recognition, you can't show up in a beat up old car. Bill Gates could. He could pull up in front of my house, show up in a beat up old car, Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, and... I would listen to every single thing that they said if they were giving me business advice. But that status piece, kind of going back, this is a little bit of a long answer, but there is some validity and there is an important aspect to making sure that you represent the success that you have and, you know, kind of respect the reputation that you're putting out there. Right. And the thing about Bill Gates and these guys, right, it's about the work that they've accomplished, not about the clothes that they wear, right? So that's a big difference in why you would sit down and listen to Bill Gates, even though he pulls up in a 2004 Camry, right? Because you know, behind him, he has 100 businesses that are trillion dollars worth. So it's like the Camry doesn't define who he is, right? But if no one knows your legacy or what you've done, you have to show up in that Porsche 911, right? You have to show up in that Ferrari for anyone to even take a look at you nowadays, right? It's like, it's weird how society works in that sense. But it's the reality that we live in. Right? Yeah. Now, with that being said, is it too late to step backwards and to step into that tier, right? Like you've stepped into the tier of freedom. Is there wiggle room to go backwards and say, you know what, maybe I can go back to tier two, show a little bit of the nicer things that I have, right? Because I don't know how many of your listeners know this, but you're a big sneakerhead. You have a bunch mm. of shoes, right? Yeah. That you never wear. <laughs> yep. which is Don't which is pretty it. funny right and it's like i've kind of expressed this to you where it's like you wear shoes in one of your posts or in a picture that's going to connect with me right away and i'm going to want to listen to what you're saying just because of the shoes strictly on the shoes now so is there any wiggle room to say you know what i'm at freedom stage but i could take a little bit of tier two and show some influence or you know some of my nicer things my ferraris my porsches my sneakers my x y and z whatever it is that you have Yeah, I think so. And I think what it really comes down to, Johnny, is the difference in mentality. So if I start portraying some of those things, it's not just so people think that I have more money or I'm more successful than I actually am. It's so that I can grab somebody's attention for a short period of time, just long enough so that I can show them like, hey, yes, this is what I drive, but there's so much more. This is just like... I look at it as it's a really captivating story in the beginning of a book, right? It's really not the essence of the book. It's just to grab their attention. And then once I have their attention, then I can say, hey, I've been able to accomplish a few things. I've been able to build some successful businesses in my life. Let me help you do the same. And so I think you're right. I think you can kind of go back and forth between some of the different tiers, depending on you know, where you want to ultimately end up. I just think that I like to look at it as if I'm in the freedom phase, unless I have lost a significant portion of my net worth, I'm going to stay there, but I'm going to dabble kind of in this status tier just to increase, you know, my success. It's not to go back and say, Hey, look at me. Like I've, this is what I've accomplished. It's to do that, but to build upon what I'm already building. Yeah, I think that's the challenging part, right? When you want to be, I don't want to say want to be humble, when you are humble and you don't want to portray this like 
cocky lifestyle, right? It's a weird balance of, I want to show people the success that I had, but I don't want you to get lost in that. Right? You don't want, I don't want you to get lost in the sauce thinking that it's all about the Ferraris and the nice things, which is, you know, it's tricky nowadays. It's really tricky. But, you know, I really pride you on the image that you have for yourself because it's authentic to you. Now, at what stage will you say it's, it's, it's too much, right? You don't want to come off as cocky. Like, where's that boundary for you of like, you know, even though I can grab the attention by showing them this, I don't want to go that route. Like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, that's a really fine line because you don't want to just be a facade. You don't just want to put it out there without what's going on, like at the roots, right? What's going on in the background. But I think it really depends on why you're doing it in the first place. You know, a lot of people, they do things and it looks like they're flexing and they're really not. They're actually trying not to. But look, I really enjoy high-end sports cars. I really do. Like when I was a little kid, I had a picture of a Ferrari Testarossa poster on my wall and I always thought it was out of reach. So I've loved cars since I was a little kid. So there's that aspect. So with some stuff, I'm not trying to flex. I'm just enjoying my life. Right. And then with others, I am trying to portray a certain image. I think as long as it's not, you know, I always say, do not buy a really expensive toy until you have a net worth of a million dollars. That's kind of my role. And I get a lot of flack, right, for saying that. But that was certainly the case with me. So as long as you have the financial resources and, you know, enjoy, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the status and enjoying your hard work. There's really not. But, you know, I've seen people in my life that, you know, they'd rather have a high-end sports car than a house, than an asset that can make them money. And traditionally, cars depreciate. And so that's a depreciating asset. And sometimes it can be considered a liability versus an appreciating asset. So, you know, it depends on the individual's goals. If it's like, hey, no, all I've ever wanted is a Ferrari and enjoy enjoy time with my kids. And that's what they want to do. And they want to flex it. I don't see any problem with that. But if they get to that point and they want something more, they're going to have to realize that assets are what is going to get them to the next tier. Awesome. Well, as we wrap up today's episode, you know, one last question I have here is what advice, like overall advice, would you give to startup entrepreneurs? I think go for it, right? 92% of people with a business idea never execute on it. And so I think just going for it, especially with what's going on in the news, talking about a recession, talking about you know, there's going to be issues with labor and there's going to be, you know, other financial issues. You'll figure it out. The difference between the successful and the unsuccessful in business is the successful people. They just keep trying. I didn't succeed with my first business. It was three or four down the road before I succeeded. So, you know, just taking that step, it really comes down to action and figuring it out and not giving up because it's going to be harder than you think it will be. It really will. And yeah, so just kind of just taking that next step. So, hey, this has been awesome, Johnny. I like where your head's at. I like these questions. I mean, it really, as you could tell, like a couple of them caught me off guard and really made me think. But it's cool to look back and see how my mentality and my opinion of certain things have changed since I've been on this, you know, entrepreneurial journey. So, yeah, thanks for joining me. I was actually thinking, that this could become, you know, maybe we do this once every three months or maybe even more frequently where we have you hop on, you ask some really thought provoking questions because you've always been able to kind of get this out of me, you know, get to the heart of issues. And I think it's been a great success. So I appreciate you for jumping on and being willing to join me today, man. Yeah, of course. I appreciate you having me and, and we can open up the question to the followers, right? And the listeners, we can open it up on Instagram and throw a poll up and if they have any questions or they're dealing with any difficulties that maybe you can answer, we'll throw it up. And then the next week after that, we'll record the episode with their questions and let them know that, you know, stay tuned. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea. So everybody out there, make sure you're following me on Instagram. Also, make sure that you're watching my stories so that those get pushed to the front. And we'll put something out there asking for some questions. And we'll make sure to give you a shout out in the episode recording. And yeah, always wanting to improve the podcast and find out what I can do to contribute to your businesses and your financial success. So make sure to follow me on Instagram, make sure to check out my stories and let me know how I'm doing and what I can do to help. And we'll catch you next time 
on the Business Growth Pod. See you later. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please leave us a rating. And for daily inspiration and business tips, follow Alan on Instagram. Until next time, remember, we build the future one entrepreneur at a time.